Leila Naimi, they've come to the conclusion based on epigraphic inscriptions across where Arabs were supposed to have lived, they come to the conclusion that all of Arabia seems to have been already monotheistic. The text that you read did not refer to Muhammad by name, did they? Uh, it refers to the messenger of God and elsewhere Muhammad is referred to as the messenger of God. And is there any reference to pagan? Is pagan Meccan Arabs? Yeah, in chapter 9 verse 1 and 2. Pagan Meccan Arabs? Pagan Meccan Arabs? With one whom you have made treaty with. Arabs? In other words, Meccan idolaters could not have existed during the time of supposed Muhammad. Impossible according to archaeological evidence. Every step of the way, untenableness. What evidence? I'm going to present negative evidence. I'm going to present evidence to suggest why some of the crucial points in this uh, storyline are untenable. I'd like you to present, which is in other words, negative evidence. Evidence to suggest this is impossible. Could not have happened. If you could present... Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Uh, thank you. Sure, sure, sure. I'm going to message you. Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, I'd like you to present positive evidence for uh, these important points. Muhammad in Mecca. Okay. What evidence exists? What conflict in Mecca? Muhammad having conflict with the idolaters in Mecca. What reasonable historical evidence exists for this? No. They started, started first. Like if you look at the Meccan chapters, or no, even they the Medina chapters. They said you're insane. Um, so in Surah, Are you insane? Ch chapter 22, you mean no. uh, verse number they, 39 they said, 14, uh, my daughter, um, it says permission has been granted to you uh, to fight back uh, because you were driven out of your home. So, uh, for no other reason than saying, uh, you know, Allah is your Lord. Uh, so this indicates that the Muslims were being persecuted and were forced out of their homes. Uh, and your mother is a Jai Muta. And it was religious persecution. Um, so because of that, um, Muslims are now given permission. Um, Muslims are given permission to fight back and to defend themselves because of religious persecution. Um, based upon the chapter 22 verse 39 and 40. But Nas, you appreciate this doesn't specify any detail about Muhammad. This doesn't specify any detail about Mecca. It doesn't uh, give any detail um, about who was persecuting whom. None of those details exist here. Muhammad being persecuted in Mecca by Meccan idolaters. Simply impossible. Okay, so it says um, in verse 39, uh, permission to those uh, to, to fought because um, they were wronged and um, they said Allah... Um, sorry, let me just change the That's a very cryptic text. Uh, yeah, who is it talking to? It's, who is it talking word about? Word. Who persecuted who? What level of detail is there? Nothing. You can't construct history based on that. So it makes it more easy if I can. Of course you can't. <laughs> Are you to Joseph? Well, that's a different story. <laughs> no, I can construct a very clear case for history of Jesus Christ, of the fundamental claims about Jesus Christ and the emergence of church. Very solid historical evidence I could present. But for Islam, I'm trying to find out doesn't seem to exist. Um, okay, so th those who were unjustly in ev evicted from their homes are uh, merely for saying our Lord is God. Um, were it not for God to repel people by means of another, monasteries, churches, synagogues and mosques, where the name of God is mentioned much would have been demolished. God supports whoever supports in God the strong and mighty. mighty. So this is saying that there's a group of people that were forced out of their homes because they were wrongly uh, uh, they were wrongly forced out of their homes uh, due to them saying that our Lord is God. Nas. And then it justifies. Nas, I can tell you clearly. So who are these groups of people? I'll come to that. I can clearly tell you that the Quran certainly talks about some conflict. I completely agree. The Quran does talk about some conflict right the way through right the way through plenty of places plenty of places 
And I have, I am now researching and I am putting together my thesis. I am putting together my thesis as, you know, in the, in the last few months I have been working on this. Now, what, and I, at the right time, I present to you my argument as to who these people involved are. But that's not the focus right now. The focus right now is, I'm asking you, what is the positive evidence that exists for Muhammad's, particularly Muhammad? Because if Muhammad didn't exist, Islam doesn't exist. Muhammad's conflict with idolatrous Meccans. So please note the details carefully. I'm talking about the person called Muhammad, who you call prophet. I'm talking about Meccan, idolaters people who are based in mecca a temple which is based in mecca or temples which are based in mecca who are idolaters because they are all sorts of idol worship whatever they persecuted muhammad i need evidence that's a very significant significant claim in the pagan arabs were they the ones who were saying that our lord is god or was it the Muslims who were saying our Lord is God? And who were worshipping in the synagogue and in the monasteries and in the churches and the mosques? So you know the verse speaks about the mosques as well as the monasteries and the churches were in the name of let, let, let me, let me, let me put it this way. Arabs? No, no, no. Nas, Nas, no. Believers in God. Nas, let me put it this way. Whether they're Jew, Christian or Muslim. Nas, let me put it this way, yeah. I am trying to, I am dealing with the history case right now. I am history, not religion. Yeah, by God's grace. How are you doing? Okay. I'm dealing, I'm dealing with the case of history. And my challenge to you is, historically, the claim about Muhammad's history is untenable. That's my claim. I'm not talking about religious description of whatever you want to say and so on. I'm talking about history. And my only point right now, in, in terms of responding to your point, if I were to, and if you were to, if you were a historian in a university somewhere, or even if you were an amateur historian, at home, reading this, you don't know anything about Muhammad so far, you're trying to construct the history of Muhammad, and if you were to read this text, those who were unjustly evicted from their homes, merely for saying our lord is god were it not that god repels people by means of others if i were to read that no one no one would even be led to based on that statement arrive at the conclusion that this is talking about a particular person called muhammad and it's talking about pagan uh, uh, meccan pagans meccan idolaters fighting with muhammad no one would do that in terms of reconstructing history. Mm -hmm. So in other words, this statement that you're bringing about is no evidence whatsoever to construct the historical case for Muhammad. So I go, I'm going so to come you, back to you. You accept Muhammad is mentioned in the Quran, is spoken about in the Quran. Um, so are his wives. Um, so it's like his family uh, companions are, I, are mentioned by name, some of them. I, I accept that there is an there is a word called word Muhammad in the Quran four times. The word occurs, whether it refers to a particular person or not, is debatable. So Even let me finish. Starting from scratch. Once, once you're again, starting sorry, from someone who doesn't know anything, uh, or someone yeah, who's yeah. ignorant of if, of Islam. Yeah. Um, so just purely from the Quran, uh, from reading the Quran, like from cover to cover, um, you come across this man Muhammad who's identified as a prophet of God in the Quran. Um, he's also referred to as Hatamun Nabi, which is understood to be the seal of the prophet. So, um, and then you see God also speaking to him, sometimes um, commanding him, instructing him, um, and even like, um, you know, speaking about religious persecution and his messages um, to worship, come to common terms, you know, our God and your God is one, um, not to associate partners with God, God he neither begets nor is begotten. You, 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 Based upon that, this verse seems to be referring to those people who are monotheists. I, I don't, I don't, I don't take, I don't take the context that you are building because the context you are building from the Quran alone no no, no. Referring to Hadith I know I know or any other I'm responding outside. to that yeah, I'm okay. responding to that from the the context you are suggesting mm -hmm. is a context that you as a Muslim is presenting you can never read a passage where the ideas that you are connecting 
are connected in the way you are connecting in the Quran. You can't, you can't bring together and b build a meaningful, coherent. If you what, can, yeah. if you can, please explain. That is my point. That is my entire challenge. So what did I say that isn't in the Quran? Okay, for example, for starters, for starters, let me ask you this, which is the same thing I asked earlier. Do you have any passage in the Quran which gives details of this prophet who is called Muhammad, who had a conflict with pagan Arabs in Mecca? All those details are important for me to build a storyline because you're giving a storyline and I'd like statements from the Quran to give me the storyline, not your, um, your idea of how you view history. So, is there any passage? I, no, yeah. Don't just use Quran, you use any evidence you want. Okay, so, so, so in the Quran in chapter 9, verses 1 to, to 12, um, it speaks of God and his messenger are not immune from um, the treaty with those pagan Arabs who have broken the treaty. And, uh, let's, let's, can you please get the verse? I'd like to know the details here. Uh, so chapter 9, uh, verse 1. Um, a declaration of immunity from God and his messenger to the polytheists with whom you had made a treaty. Yeah. So travel in the land for four months and know that you cannot escape God and that God will disgrace the disbelievers. And if yeah. you carry on to verse number 12, but if they, uh, sorry, verse 30, 30 um, the next, were you not fighter people who violated their oath and plan to exile the messenger and initiated hostility against you. Do you fear them or it is God you should fear if you are believers? So, so this verse is saying that the, um, these people who had broken the oath, um, they plotted or planned to exile the messenger and they initiated the hostility against you. Yeah. So this is saying that these people, they're the ones who started the fight. Uh, Nas, they plotted Nas I, I, I don't know where we are. No, no, no. Nas, I, Nas, Nas, I'm going to repeat this. And I oh, okay. really, I, I'm sure you would understand. You are mm -hmm. a very, you're supposed to be a very intelligent man. And I'm sure... That's what you, people say. <laughs> well, and I'd like but, to say that too. Uh, but for me, for me to continue to say that, you need to now stick to the details. I am talking about a person called Muhammad. Muhammad as a person who you call a prophet. Muhammad. Not any, any guy, Tom, Dick and Harry, who is called a messenger. I, that could be anyone. Let me finish. Muhammad. One person that I care about. The other entity that I care about, Meccan Arab idolaters. Mecca, Arab, idolaters. And that in particular, when I, I, I refer, I am stressing on the word idolaters because I want to, I am referring to the idolaters as how we would call idolaters. Because of course you would appreciate and understand that the Quran calls Christians also as idolaters. The Quran, that's true. Okay, maybe we'll discuss that later. Now, that's fine. Okay. Okay, now, now, give me details about Muhammad, anything Mecca, yeah. Muhammad, Mecca, idolaters, where Meccan idolaters chased him away. So, um, going back to the Christian point, um, in chapter 3... No, no, we'll come to the Christian point later. No, 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 uh, uh, apologies, maybe I'll come to that later. Okay, so Meccan, Me yeah. Muhammad, Meccan pagan Arabs or idolatrous Arabs uh, persecuting Muhammad resulting in Muhammad having to um, uh, do hijra. Any evidence? Yes, so in the Quran, the Muhammad is referred to as the messenger of God. So, so there is a verse. No, no, that is what you are saying. I'd like. No, 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 no. You want the reference? You and I are. You, you, uh, no, no, no. Wait a second. Any passage you show, please show any passage you want. But any passage you show should bring together this knowledge. Should bring together. Nas, any passage that you want to show or any number of passages you want to show should bring together the storyline. I want, I am focused on the storyline. Muhammad, Meccan, Pagan, Arabs. Persecution. 
Yes, yeah, so in chapter 47. Uh, so we have dealt with chapter 9, you couldn't provide. I do believe I did provide. You, you didn't want, provide. You there was no to, reference to Muhammad there. You wanted to know the identity of the messenger of God. Exactly, I want to know. Where in the Quran, Muhammad is referred to as the messenger of God. That's your claim. And this is speaking. That's well, your I can claim. show you where that, he's referred to as the messenger of God. No, 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 no. You need to show me where, how, any time the word messenger is used, it refers to Muhammad. For you then to go on to say... But that's not my understanding. Uh, my view is not any time whenever the messenger of God appears, it always refers to the Prophet Muhammad. And therefore, From when the you show up... It determines whether it refers to Muhammad or whether it refers to Jesus and so, or to some other... When you are other. reading from chapter 9, but from you, chapter need to explain, nine, you need to explain why you think that refers to Muhammad and why you think that ref the persecutors are pagan Meccan, uh, Meccan uh, Arab idolaters. So grammatically, Surah 9 verses 1 to 13 um, is, is speaking in the present context. So it's, the situation is that it's speaking up there and then. So it's addressing a messenger there and then, and it's referring to polytheists uh, who existed there and then. So it's not speaking about a future messenger of God or someone who existed previously. But it's within that context. Mas, let me put it this way, Mas. I, I'm, 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 I'm a bit. I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry right now. And I, I'd like to say, I'm really sorry, but I'd like to say you are simply doing an injustice in our conversation. I am talking about building a historical storyline. You are building a religious, religious, you know, storyline. And by that, what I mean is a storyline based on religious beliefs not a storyline based on uh, historical artifacts or historical statements. I am trying to ask you, as a historical storyline... Did the Christians, based upon non like Muslim sources, refer to Muhammad as a messenger of God? Like, so, like, so identified him as like a messenger... Meccan pagan Arabs persecuted Saracen. Meccan pag pagan Arabs persecution so we have like christians like from about two two years after the death of the prophet that's traditionally believed are referring to muhammad as being a messenger coming from the, the arabs the nas meccan pagan arabs persecuting muhammad you haven't given any evidence so far so, uh, i'm satisfied with chapter nine verses one. chapter nine chapter nine uh, I'm sure you would appreciate. I think, I think, I think you're, I think you're ducking the challenge right now. And also chapter 22, verse 14. No, you, you are just adding more. Please read. If you want to read one more, one more passage, I'm quite happy for you to read. But so far, no connection made from what you have read between Muhammad and pagan Meccan um, Arabs, where pagan Meccan Arabs persecuted Muhammad. So far, no detail provided. Um, so, like in verse seven of, um, sure. sorry, I was trying to find the verse that says Muhammad is a messenger of God. Um, but while you're while you're trying to get that, can I please mention this? Mm -hmm. So I said, I mean, so far I don't, I haven't heard a positive attestation. Is Quran your only source? Have you, can you use? You can use any source you want. So far you haven't given a positive attestation, historically dependable, positive attestation. Since, since you've opened it up, not just to Quran only, but also to any source. So if you go to the Tafsir literature... The late, tafsir, late, the, uh, very late. But you said any source. Like, can you well, any, the, any reasonable source, any source for us to be able to build a historical case. Of course, you know, today people can write any fancy story. Today, for example, so, in Islamic tradition, you have an entire, uh, entire uh, mythological storyline. I agree. Today you have it. If you go to Wikipedia, you can read the entire storyline. I agree. And you can show Wikipedia if you wanted to. But that's not my point. My point is so, so historical. So, so, so Patricia Krohn, uh, she says the Quran that Muslims recite, uh, almost all of it, if not all, 
uh, is from, from the time of the Prophet Muhammad. So we can confidently conclude that these verses are addressing and speaking to the Prophet. I, 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 I disagree. So now what you're doing is you're just citing scholars here. What I don't want to... That's fine. Well, I, I respect Patricia Crone in multiple different ways, but I don't agree with every single point she makes. What I'm looking for, what, but now uh, what I'm looking for is evidence. If Patricia Crone can't provide evidence, then then that still means one second, us. That still means there is no evidence provided for the existence for the for moments. Absolutely, but no, no, I, 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 absolutely, I'll come to that. Nas, Nas, Nas. We need to, Nas. No, I would like us to. I would like us to focus. I would like us to focus. I would like us to focus on this. The resurrection of Jesus. I would like us to focus on this. Mecca, pagan, me, pagan, Meccan Arabs, persecuting Muhammad. No shred of evidence. No positive evidence whatsoever. In the contrary, in the contrary, can I, can I, Nas? Using the verses you have shown, so no one can build it. You, about a messenger using the verses you have shown. Community that will force that using the verses you have shown. Start the, uh, the hostility. Using the verses you have shown, we can only have Harry Potter stories. I am not I'm interested in Harry Potter stories. I am interested in history. And there my point is, Nas, no positive evidence so far, which is enough to be able to construct history. In contrast, I have historical evidence would disagree with you. Crone would say we actually know I'm not I'm not that's not Nas, Nas, Nas you're say not doing justice. Buddha. I, I wanted to call Moses, you intelligent. You really Jesus. need to stick to the point. Don't cite scholars. Citing scholars you can come up with any idea you want. Okay. Citing scholars you may claim his Hinduism is true. Citing scholars you may claim God doesn't exist. Citing scholars you can claim anything you want under the sun. That's not what we're trying to do. What we are trying to do is trying to get to the actual evidence. Muhammad's conflict with Meccan pagan Arabs, no positive evidence so far. I have negative evidence. I have, no, according to what you've read so far, nothing, nothing giving details about a person called Muhammad, nothing identifying who that person is, nothing identifying. You said, you said that, but that text doesn't say that. In your, in your view, Nas, but the text doesn't say that. I, I am going to write now. I have reasons to think the entire idea of Muhammad having conflict with pagan Meccan Arabs is untenable. Ahmad al Jalad, in terms of his recent research, you know, in the last um, few years, Ahmad al Jalad and um, uh, Leila Naimi, they've come to the conclusion based on epigraphic inscriptions study of epigraphic inscriptions across where Arabs were supposed to have lived they come to the conclusion that even for a couple of centuries before when Muhammad is supposed to have walked around Arabia all of Arabia seems to have been already monotheistic that is what they have found inscription evidence for no evidence for Meccan pagan Arab, Meccan, uh, pagan, Arab, idolatry. No evidence whatsoever. Contrary evidence. They have found inscriptions from before the 5th century of pagan inscription. Before the 5th century doesn't help. I am talking, Muhammad is 570 AD. There does appear to be some kind of religious revolution that took Where? place. In Mecca? 200 years before. Where? Uh, the Prophet Muhammad or of monotheism. Where? Um, so, so based upon the research of Jajala, yeah, um, based on the research, based on the research, he's still researching like he still. No, no, Leila, no, no. Leila Naimi, Leila, Leila Naimi has written about this. Ahmad Al Jalad uses this in further research. The point concluded. So one second, let me finish, Nas. No, 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 one second. Well, they've been there's searching for a long time. Investigating. How many inscriptions are there between uh, uh, Mecca and Medina? The, uh, around Mecca, be, between Mecca and this, Taif and so on. How the, many? They still haven't yet concluded. How many? Uh, I haven't lo lo looked into that. 70,000 uh, Nas, 70,000 Sephardic inscriptions found so far. Very, very few Meccan inscriptions. Very few. Very few. If I, if I remember correctly, under uh, 30 or something, very, very few. 
that clearly tells us that it is not just that pagan uh, Meccan idolatrous Arabs they could not have existed during the time of Muhammad it not alone tells us that it also tells us even Mecca could not have existed during the time of Muhammad in the way it is bolstered Jalad up to be. says Jalad believes in Mecca Jalad can believe in whatever he wants to believe the point is what does the evidence lead to Well, the scholar that you're referring to disagrees with your conclusion of the evidence no that's your Jalad? spin or interpretation. Nas, no. We have a bias. Nas, no. Jalad has research. He has conclusions based on the research. He also has belief statements. As you may know, Jalad is, from what I can gather, he's still a Muslim. From what I can gather. What level of Muslim, I don't know. He clearly contradicts with traditional Islamic narrative. But he has belief statements and research conclusions. I don't care about his belief statements because that's not what we are talking about here. I am talking about research conclusions. I am talking about research conclusions. Research conclusions, 70,000, approximately 70,000 Sephardic inscriptions so far, under, even around, if I remember correctly, under around 30 in the region of Mecca. So Mecca seems to have not even existed at that time. No, that, that's not what he concludes. Like, how does that prove Mecca didn't exist? Because well, no inscription, no archaeology. Monotheistic. Mecca. So, in your view, in your view, was there Hajj during the time of Muhammad? Pilgrimage. Or, yeah, during the time of Muhammad to Mecca. Um, yeah, people made pilgrimage to Mecca. So, and did people ma make pilgrimage to any of the other uh, Arabian Peninsula cities? I've not looked into it, I don't know. So only Mecca, you, as far as you understand? I'm sure people made pilgrimage to Jerusalem. And to other and I'm talking about Arabian Peninsula. Um, yeah, it's possible like to, uh, I think Yemen was another place of pilgrimage. That possible, yeah. Made. But we are, in terms of your understanding, what is the prominent place of pilgrimage? In your awareness, I'm not asking for your... Uh, I don't know prominent, but people made pilgrimage to Mecca. To Mecca. Mecca. It's supposed to have been it's supposed to have been a, an international according to Islamic claims, which I'm going to call Harry Potter lies. It's supposed to have been a place of international pilgrimage. Pilgrimage from all sorts of people. So it's supposed to be a very if you're prominent gonna call it Harry Potter, then you may as well call the resurrection of Jesus Harry. No, 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 no. Resurrection of no, no no no. We can come to resurrection of Jesus in a bit, Nas. But I'm talking about Mecca, I'm talking about Islam, Muhammad at the moment. I can talk about the resurrection in a little bit please but i don't want to muddle up the water here mecca mecca nas 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 mecca international place of pilgrimage 70000 sephardic inscriptions elsewhere around 30 or under 30 in mecca traditional view um there were monotheists before islam so we accept that even amongst christians there were monotheists they were like Jewish Christians, so or the early followers of Jesus were, were monotheists, they were not Trinitarians. So, one second, uh, Nas, so this would have also included for Mecca, but Christians that existed that may not have been Trinitarians, so but I stuck to the original saying. teachings of Jesus. I don't understand what you say. Are you saying Mecca existed as a city at that time? Now, I'm saying there were monotheists even before the coming of the Prophet Muhammad. The question is, did Mecca and exist and is there evidence for that? My point right now is Mecca seems to have been a, a negligent a city which was ignored according to inscription evidence. Tomali, um, I think it's a second century uh, Christian, uh, refers to Mecca in his map known as Makrabra. Known as what? Uh, he refers to Tomali. Yeah. How um, does he refer to that? He refers to Mecca in his map, known as Makrabra. Makrabra. That's not Mecca. That's a very different name. It now, seems to be maybe it's, it's been Greek. Greek a very conjectural idea. No, no, no. That's a very conjectural idea. Neil, Neil very, very conjectural idea. Nas, let's deal with. Let's not deal with conjectures. Your and my salvation is dependent on the religion we follow. Let's not deal with conjectures. I am talking about evidence. Message of Islam. In one no, no, no. I'm not talking about core message of Islam. I am talking about whether Muhammad even existed. The res Is, resurrection. Can you have Islam without Muhammad's existence? Um, Islam existed before the coming of the Prophet. No. Can you have your Quran before? Can you have your Quran without Muhammad's existence? The Quran wouldn't exist if there was no Prophet Muhammad. 
So there is no Quran without Muhammad. The, the, the first person to be associated with the Quran historically is the man Muhammad. So when there is no Muhammad, there is no Quran. Uh, y yes. Good. So if Muhammad didn't exist, it doesn't matter how go mono whether you are monotheist or not, whether you are monotheist or not. If Muhammad did not exist, the Muslims walking around today with Quran, giving out free Qurans would not have existed. And so my focus is, my my focus is, could Muhammad have existed? And that my point is, you through through sorry, sorry. Through the evidence that you have presented, the passages you read so far, you have implicitly agreed that there is no tangible evidence for claiming. Well, implicitly, you didn't explicitly say that because you have your religious motivations. But no, no, no. The text that you read did not refer to Muhammad by name, did they? Uh, it refers to the messenger of God. And elsewhere, Muhammad is referred to as the messenger. Of God. And is there any reference to pagan? Is pagan Meccan Arabs? Yeah, in chapter nine, verse what one and two. pagan Meccan Arabs, pagan Meccan Arabs, with one whom you have made treaty with Arabs. Um, Meccan. It's in Arabic, so it would be the writing is in Arabic. Where they Arabs? So, so they're not Chinese. What do you mean not Chinese? What? Is this the kind of argument you advance, Nas? People who speak Arabic, so obviously they will be. Uh, who Arabic. spoke Arabic? The Quran is, is speaking. Quran is Arabic. a book. So it's I am talking about Arabic. the people who persecuted that. Nas, the people who is being referred to as the persecutors. So you the Quran in the Arabic language. Yes, I do. So it's not speaking to Chinese or Spanish, but it's speaking to Arab. Why do you think the Quran is speaking? Are you are you saying the Quran only speaks to Arabs? No, I'm saying the Quran is 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 in Arabic. The Arabic Quran today so in India. Uh, where are you from? Are you from India, or Pakistan, or Bangladesh? Uh, 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 Ethnically, uh, uh, I'm from South Asia, India. Yeah. There, did you read the Quran in Arabic? Uh, no, I read it in English because I'm British. But that's fine. But did you read the Quran in Arabic? Uh, yeah, I read it in Arabic. Would you like to? Would you prefer to read it in Arabic? Uh, yeah, prefer Arabic. So, your yeah, Arabic Quran is attempting to speak to non Arabs also, clearly. Because yeah, that's the language in which it was originally revealed. No, no, but and therefore, and therefore, just because the Quran is Arabic, it doesn't mean that just because the Quran is written in Arabic, it doesn't mean the entire storyline contained in Quran is only for Arabs. And therefore, you can't make so your the point there. People associated with it are Arabs or people who speak Arabic. How do you say that? It wouldn't make sense for the Quran to be given to Chinese in Arabic. Who, who were the inhabitants? Who were the inhabitants in the Arabian Peninsula uh, around the time Muhammad was supposed to have lived? Arabs. Only? Yes. No Jews? Uh, no Arab Christians? Arab Jews, Arab Christians? No Christians? Arab Jews and Arab Christians. Uh, Arab? <laughs> what do you mean Arab Jews? Uh, um, the Jews who speak Arabic and Christians who speak Arabic. No, no, I speak in English. Yeah, am I English or I, I, I'm a Tamil? What would you call me as? Uh, British Tamil. British in terms of citizenship, perhaps, but in terms of ethnicity, what would I be? In terms of mother tongue, what would I be? Uh, South Asian. Yeah. Tamil. I'm a Tamil. Yeah. Now, Jews in terms of the mother tongue. If you were to speak to them in their mother tongue, what would the language be? But you also have Arabic speaking Jews as well. Now, so now we are going now we are going all over the place. Now, simple point is you simply haven't presented a positive attestation for Muhammad having conflict we with disagree, pagan. We, with speak time, yeah. we let's speak another time, but when you come please bring evidence for this. I'd really like to read evidence. I don't think the evidence will be satisfying anyway. Well clearly that, uh, that's why I'm struggling. And therefore, when you bring, you need to bring something better. You can't read the passages which you have read so far and think you've made that point. So, so let's see how many people you convince or academics like Gabriel Reynolds or even Jalad or Patricia Crone. That's not the point right now. That's not the point right now. The point right now is you simply haven't provided evidence there, Nas. So that is the point I want to make. Now, I, on the other hand, I, on the other hand, you anyway, so. I'm not talking about being convinced. I am talking about people who are watching would read the statements you read. The statements you read weren't referring to someone who they can build a case for in terms of Muhammad. They can't use that passage as a passage. Arguing for the sake of arguing. 
So like when I said the Quran is in Arabic, so it applies, it's addressing Arabs, people who speak Arabic, but you're just coming with any hypothesis. So, which, is, which isn't probable, which is more probable that the Quran I explained to you addressing Chinese or Spanish. I explained to you now if you if now your logic does not hold water it's because what's that? So, so your I am is it possible that the Quran could be addressing another ethnicity other than Arab because clearly there were Jews. Is that probable? This is the historical fact that we know of. There were non speaking to Arabs. I'm not talking about what probability Arabic speaking Jews or whether they're Arabic speaking pagans. Yeah, good. So if you understand and I'm seeing already that you're moving towards appreciating that could have been that could have been reference in reference to Jews. My my point to you is Muhammad did not have conflict with Arabic speaking Jews. He had conflict with what you and I would call pagan ethnic Arabs, not Arabs by language, but Arabs by ethnicity. My question is the language is irrelevant there because in that land area, people might have spoken all sorts of different languages, but ethnically, there were different people groups who lived there. And so by reading that passage, you simply cannot say it is in reference to ethnic Arabs who were from Mecca you have not shown any association with Mecca also so far from Mecca who were idolatrous maybe idolatry I take that on board because it refers to you know uh, idolatry indirectly I agree with that but Meccan haven't uh, shown evidence Arabs ethnic Arabs haven't shown evidence evidence is the Quran is in Arabic so it's addressing people who are Arabic speakers Arabic speakers, but ethnic Arabs is what I care about. Meccan, did Muhammad have conflict with Jewish Arabic speakers in Mecca? So, so you accept the Quran is addressing pagans on certain occasions. So the verses that I showed are, are being addressed to also pagan Arabs or, or to, to, to polytheists who speak Arabic. I, I'm going to... I'm going to come to you in chapter 9 when he speaks about God and his messenger are free from immunity from the, the polytheists. So those are Arabic speaking polytheists. Nas, Nas, yeah, you're just trying to repeat what you were saying earlier. Nas, what do you have to, let me, let me quickly, let me quickly add these things. 70,000 inscriptions, Sephardic alone, Sephardic alone. Very, very few in and around Mecca. So Mecca seems not to have been inhabited in the way you uh, islam 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 presents it to be no evidence contrary evidence it's not just lack of evidence it's contrary evidence everywhere else we get plenty of inscriptions here we don't have sufficient number what is then just means there were explains so, no, wait a second. Just like there were polytheists as well. Do you appreciate the handful of inscriptions in Mecca has nothing to do with polytheism? Have you read Ahmad Al Jalad's work? The, the inscriptions in Mecca have nothing, is are of no religious persuasion at all before the supposed Islamic times. No religious persuasion. There are also pagan inscriptions as well, but these. I'm talking about Mecca right now. Inscriptions are before uh, the fifth century. I'm talking about Mecca. So, so no religious persuasion. So, so Jalab does say there are pagan inscriptions. No, I'm talking about Mecca. In Mecca. No religious affiliation. Also referring to Mecca as well. What's that? Is he not also referring to Mecca? No, in regards to Mecca, his point is clear. Pre what is supposed to have been Islamic period, no religious content. In an, in the few, very few inscriptions we have from Mecca. In other words, if I could present few doesn't mean all. Few uh, only few. There are only few. Uh, so, so there's few pagan inscriptions. No, no, no. There are only few inscriptions. All of them. No, no, no. There are only few inscriptions in, in and around Mecca signifying, essentially conveying to us that Mecca wasn't a significant city before the time of, you know, the, uh, the emergence of Islam. Wasn't a significant city at all. And so the entire idea of Hajj and so on are fantasy ideas. Now, point number two is even the few inscriptions we have of. There was like Hajj. Uh, and like Umrah, this came like in roughly in the 9th, um, 
like in the ni um, ninth year of the Medina phase of the Prophet. So you believe there was no Hajj uh, to Mecca pre-Islam? No, no, not, not like what we have today. No, so clearly there was no international Hajj to Mecca? Uh, no, not, not in the way that we have it today. Well, today we have international Hajj and if, if not in the way today and in a way that it doesn't even show signs of inhabitation, clearly there could not have been Hajj there. There was pilgrimage, but not like in the There's way. There's no inscription evidence. Everywhere else we have no inscription evidence. Uh, okay, we can look more into it. Then. Absolutely. Let's. I'd like you to follow up on that. Okay. Every evidence, inscription-wise, tells us Mecca could not have even be any even a primitive city, let alone a prominent city. Impossible. So number one. Number two. The other point I want to make is before Islam is supposed to have started. For about a century or more, across the Arabian Peninsula, not just near Mecca, across the Arabian Peninsula, all evidence suggests to the fact of an existing monotheism only. In other words, Meccan idolaters could not have existed during the time of supposed Muhammad. Impossible according to archaeological evidence. So in other words, your idea of Muhammad... One second. No, no, Jalad clearly says there was a religious... But he doesn't say there's no polytheist just based upon the archaeological findings. Just because there's no inscriptions like prior to the 5th century of any uh, pagans uh, doesn't mean that the pagans didn't exist. It's just we don't have, have any inscription. Uh, Nas, I think, I think you're misrepresenting Jalad's work. Jalad is very clear for about a century Just plus. We don't have any inscriptions of Abraham, but it doesn't mean Abraham. That's not the same. No, 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 no. For, for about a century or more before the time of Islam, we have plenty of inscriptions. We have plenty. No, no, no. We have plenty of inscription in the Arabian Peninsula, but all of them pointing. But no, wait a second. Nas, you're now. Now, I don't know why you're doing this. I'm talking about a simple fact. You're going around and trying to, you know, no, no, the red herring. What you're talking about is red herring. My point is simple. Would you please, add, would you please, would you please address my point? My point is simple. For about a century or more, before Islam is supposed to have started, across the Arabian Peninsula, there was only monotheism as per plenty of inscriptions available across the peninsula no evidence for i'm arguing from silence well no you know what the argument from silence is if i told you there is that it doesn't exist my point is inscriptions exist there's no silence inscriptions exist inscriptions exist nas give me one good reason give me one good reason why only monotheists would inscribe but polytheists would not. Give me one good reason. Especially if Mecca, in Mecca, for example, polytheists were the dominant groups. Why would they not inscribe anything when monotheists were everywhere inscribing monotheistic material? Uh, one good reason. We have poetry. Um, and no, no, I'm, I'm not, you're running away. I'm talking about inscriptions, epigraphy. You're talking about literary source outside of epigraphy, outside of rock inscriptions. Give me one good reason why. No, Nas, you told me that I am arguing from the argument. Uh, I am arguing from silence. I find I'm, I'm baffled because what I am saying is there are plenty of inscriptions, all of them monotheistic, all, and therefore Ahmed Al Jalad clearly concludes clearly there seems. One second. Now let me finish. Nas, let me finish, and I'll present a particular challenge. Please respond to that. My, uh, let me finish. Ahmad al-Jalad clearly concludes something is clearly amiss. There seems to have been a monotheistic revolution across the Arabian Peninsula to an extent there are only, ins there are only monotheistic inscriptions dating from about 100 plus years across Arabia. Plenty of them only monotheistic, no polytheism. And I'm asking you, if polytheists were the predominant group, as how Islam, Islamic Harry Potter story projects itself to be, uh, projects, projects, the question is, why would polytheists not write when the monotheists were writing everywhere? 
Why wouldn't they do? It hasn't yet been discovered. Maybe it will be discovered in the future. You know? Just like we didn't have any archaeological evidence for David for a very long time. And then later on, we did dis discover some description of the name David. Nas, Nas, if the, the problem is, I'm sure you understand the challenge I'm raising. When, in, when evidence, archaeological evidence uh, was not yet found for King David, the Tel Dan Stile, before that time, there wasn't many archaeological inscriptions of anyone. And so it was reasonable. You would expect to reasonably find inscriptions corresponding to more prominent people first. Nas, you would expect to find inscriptions corresponding to more prominent people first. That is the reasonable expectation. Doesn't happen all the time. David wasn't prominent. He was, but the point is, from his time, less prominent people weren't identified first before him. That didn't happen. More prominent people were identified first. Tell Dan CLA came about first. Less prominent people later. My point is, if in Arabian Peninsula, in a Meccan Islamic Arabia, the Harry Potter Islamic Arabia, the prominent people were polytheists, prominent. Prominent enough that Muhammad had to run away, Hijra, what you would call Hijra. That was a running away for life. That is how prominent polytheists were, according to Islamic Harry Potter lies. My point is, if that is how prominent they were, when how you, come... When you say Harry Potter lies, if you've already like exposing your bias, you've already made up your mind, I, and you're not willing to look at any evidence. Please evidence, give me any evidence. Any evidence as Why? to the contrary. Please you, give me. You try to come up with any hypothesis. Nas, you need to give me evidence. Irrational. Nas, you're just giving me... Uh, and any evidence that I do give, you'll just say... Oh, what is the evidence? evidence? I've given you no evidence. That's all plenty, saying. plenty of inscriptions. Okay, for so we said what we wanted to say. Sure. Let's just end there. We can sure, conclude. sure. Um, but next time, next time, next so time, next time, please bring evidence, please. Okay, I didn't bring any evidence. So. Next time, Nas, please bring evidence next time. I want to really I know. Evidence, no, you well, didn't bring. No, no. Made up your mind about Harry Potter lies well, I am researching. Bring me evidence. Commensurate with what is what so can be used. I am doing sincere research. You are showing me a text which doesn't mention Muhammad by name, doesn't mention Mecca by name, doesn't mention, it used the word messenger. It used the word polytheist. Did it, in, in all the passages you have read so far, did, did the word Mecca... Muhammad, you did also say, or oh, maybe this is another Muhammad. And that just goes back Nas, in the, in the passages you have read so far, was the word Mecca used at all? Uh, it refers to polytheists. Mecca? Uh, Arab polytheists. It doesn't mention Arab. It's in Arabic language. The text is in Arabic language, but we agreed. Arabic has their first language. Which is not the case for Jews who also lived in Arabian Peninsula. Jews also speak, spoke Arabic in order to get by. You use the term first language. Jews, for Jews, Hebrew would have been the first language, not Arabic. You can be a Jew and ethnically and you can have English as your first language. No, are you talking about can be? Are you talking about can be? Are you talking about... Nas, are you... I'm not talking about can be. Nas, I'm not talking about can be. How many Jews my, my, spoke Hebrew anyway in the 7th century in the world? How many Jews what? How many Jews spoke Hebrew in the 7th century? Because the Hebrew language was dead for about a thousand years. How do you know the Hebrew language was dead in the 7th century? How, what evidence have you got? It was revived with the state of Israel. No, it was revived in a particular way in, nine, in the 20th century, I agree. But how do you know in the 7th century it was dead? How do you know? That's what I was actually asking you. How do you know? That no, how do you, no, no, you are telling me that it was century. dead, that they couldn't have spoken Hebrew as their first language. I'm asking you for evidence. You are just giving me Islamic fantasy ideas. Okay, then no evidence re whatsoever. Re refer to those people who you know the history of the Hebrew language. Refer to what? Uh, uh, academics who, who, know, who are aware of the history of the Hebrew. Are you saying there are academics who clearly demonstrate that Hebrew was dead in the Arabian Peninsula in the 7th century? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying that you should research it more and see no, I'm asking whether you, Hebrew... I'm asking you, you said Arabic okay, so was their I'm first saying, language. So I'm saying uh, research with the Hebrew... But you don't have evidence to present today. You don't have evidence to present that the, uh, that uh, Hebrew was dead in the 7th century. Uh, I'm just appealing to academics. No, which one? You're not Expert. presenting anyone. 
So, so people uh, who know the history of the Hebrew language. Anyone, you're not giving anyone. Like Encyclopedia Britannica. Not example. giving anyone, not any particular research. So to claim that I... I just said Encyclopedia Britannica and now you're saying I'm not giving anyone in particular. Quoting insight. Merely by naming. So this is what I mean, you come with a bias. No, no I'm, I'm a bit surprised. I'm asking you for, anyway, I'm asking, I'm asking. You can speak to the camera, you can say that, look, Nazam won the way and um, he can't answer my questions. No, 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 that's questions. not the point. I'm no sure evidence. you're not going, going so, away, Nas. Yeah. And I'm sure... Let's speak another time. So. Let's speak another time. Like sure. Speak to some other people. Okay, sure. Yeah. But good to see you, oh, Nas. Thank you, yeah. yeah, God's good blessings. But please, more details next time. Let's catch up. Okay, okay. Muhammad, Meccan pagan Arabs. Please. So the challenge, my dear friends, especially Muslim friends who are being recorded in the, in the Dawah channel cameras, the point is simple. Muhammad's interaction with pagan Arab Meccans is a fantasy idea. No historical evidence that could be presented. Harry Potter lies. When we deal with Mecca, what we know of from archaeological artifacts are a few important things. Number one, Mecca, very little information to even suggest that it was, a in, uh, that it was an inhabited area. Whether people lived there or not, no one knows of. What we can say is, regardless, it was, a, um, it was not a prominent city by any stretch of imagination. Mecca could not have existed in the way Islam claims that Mecca existed. Very important. Number two, pagan Arabs could not have existed in Mecca around the time of Muhammad. Simply impossible. Impossible. Don't run away. Don't run away with your Dawah cameras. Please take this message to your Dawah uh, Muslims because we need the eyes of Muslims to be open. Mecca could not have existed during the time of Muhammad. Pagan Arabs, idolaters could not have existed during the time of Muhammad. This is what recent research tells us. What we know of is that from all the information we have, Muhammad's interaction seems to have been a fantasy lie akin to Harry Potter stories. If you are a Muslim, please leave Islam and come to the Lord Jesus Christ. In contrast, Jesus Christ is very historical. Jesus Christ, his death, his burial, his resurrection could be demonstrated through objective historical. Hello, sir. You are a Muslim preacher, aren't you? A Dawah a dawa guy. Okay. I'm assuming you haven't got the guts to face the challenge also. So, Islam, fantasy life, time to give up on. We need to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. I can provide evidence after evidence after evidence that in the century of when Jesus is supposed to have lived, we have evidence not alone from Christian followers, but also from Jews, non-Christian Jews, from non-Christian Greeks, from non-Christian uh, uh, Roman writers that, hello, how are you doing, okay? That Jesus' crucifixion is a historical fact. That the fact of the resurrection could be easily demonstrated based on evidence we know of. Jesus was worshipped as God, right? In the first century. And we have evidence to demonstrate these things. Harry Potter lies, we have to leave and we need to come to the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. God's richest blessings to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. God's blessings.